So, previous class, I was playing with two batteries, they connected in series, yes. connected in parallel and so on. Today, you have showed how to analyze circuit where multiple resistors are there. I was thinking, suppose if I connect two resistors in series or parallel, like the battery, is there an easy way to, way to get an equivalent value? So, it turns out that yes, there is a systematic way of what happens when you connect things in series or parallel for resistors. Hmm. So, um, it is easy to, now that we have seen KVL, KCL, it is easy for us to exactly figure out what that is. Okay. So, we will take uh, two, two resistors in parallel first. Sure. So, what I am going to do, I want to see what happens when I put two resistors in parallel. So, let us start with something easy, no? Yeah. So, I will make those two resistors equal. Sure. I will just uh, call it R and R. Yeah. Right. I want to find out what this looks like. So, yesterday, in fact, what we said was we took two voltage sources in parallel and we connected them in parallel like this. So, we said if you have V and V, we the said same. that the potential drop from here to here is always same. V, yeah. always the same. Yeah. There is no difference at all. Correct. Will it be like that here? Not we exactly the same. We okay. don't know. Okay. Not exactly the same. Okay. So, now similarly, just like we said overall, this looks just like a single battery with potential drop V. We want to find out what this looks like. So, conceptually, we, what did we say resistance was? We said uh, the current is proportional to the voltage yeah. or voltage is proportional to the current through the resistance. Correct. And we also said it dissipates energy, power. Yeah. power. Yeah. So, same thing happens here. We do not have anything that produces power. Mm. This first resistor R will burn power. The second one will also burn power. Independently. Independently. So, most likely it is something that is going to burn power. Mm -hmm. Now, each one of these is linear. So, we can imagine that maybe the combination will also be linear. Mm -hmm. So, the way to find that out, um, the way we will do it, we will say that we will connect a voltage source across this okay. and see what happens. So, what we will do, we will take the same circuit and connect a voltage source. Some voltage V we will connect across it and we will find out how much current this takes. Sure. And then based on that, we will figure mm, out what the value that is. That will give the idea. So, let us say some I. current I is there. Hmm. Now, we do not know what this I is. Yeah. Now, we can solve node analysis, mesh analysis, but this is such a simple circuit, we should not have to do that. So, I think… Voltage is known. Voltage is known. So, in fact, for this, because both resistors have only the voltage source connected across, we know that the voltage across each of these is just V. Yeah. So, the current through each of these is also known. So, we do not for such a simple circuit, we do not need to. So, we know this current, I will call it uh, I 1, I 2. So, we know that I 1 through Ohm's law is nothing but V by R and I 2 is also V by R. Now, we can apply KCL at this node and we know I. So, I is nothing but I 1 plus I 2 and I 1 is V by R. Yes. I 2 is V by v R. R. So, this is nothing but 2 V by R. Okay. But now, we want to find out what this looks like. Hmm. So, we said most likely it looks like a resistance. Correct. So, let us find out what the resistance is. So, what we need to do? We need to think of what resistance should be connected to draw the same current. To draw the same current. Okay. Okay. So, what we will do, we will say that if you took the same battery, but now if you were to connect some R, I will call it R equivalent. Yeah. Equivalent resistance. Yeah. And I connect the same battery, it should draw the same current. Okay. That R equivalent, we know the relationship through Ohm's law. Yes. So, we know that V is nothing but I times R equivalent. R equivalent. And which means 
if you compare these two, we should be able to tell what R equivalent is. Okay. So, you can see that R equivalent is nothing but V by I and here V by I is nothing but R by 2. R by 2. V by I is R equivalent that is from here from this equation and uh, from this equation this is R equivalent is nothing but R by 2. Oh, so it is half of. It is exactly half. So, you take two resistors, connect them in parallel like this, it gives you exactly half the resistance. Hmm. If they are different, R1 and R2? That is a little bit more complicated, but not too much luckily. Hmm. All we have to do is rewrite the same equations. Instead of just saying R and R, we will just say R1 and R2. Yeah. Shall we do that now? Yes. So, I am going to take the same circuit. I am going to just say there are two resistors in parallel. So, I will call this R1, R2, the same voltage V and this is this current I. Yeah. And I have currents I1 and I2 through these two resistors. Now, again the same voltage comes through both. Yes. So, I1 is nothing but v, the v by R1. R1 and I2 is V by R2. R2 and same equations hold I is I1 plus I2. So, this is nothing but V by R1 plus V by R2 and we also know that R equivalent is V by I. So, all we need to do is find out V by I from this equation. Mm -hmm. So, here this V by I, in fact, maybe we will not avoid that step. We will say I by V is 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. So, V by I is inverse of that. Okay. So, we know V by I is R equivalent here. We know V by I is this. So, R equivalent is R1, R2 by R1, R1 R2 by R1 plus R2. So, R equivalent is R1, R2 by R1 plus R2 for this okay. parallel combination of any two resistors. Okay. And now you see why you got R by 2. Mm. If R1 was equal to R2, you will get R squared by 2R, which is R by, two. R by 2. Now, I know what your next question is going to be. What happens if you have 3 resistors <laughs> or 4 resistors? So, this logic can be extended. This logic can be easily extended. So, all you have to do is if you have so many resistors in parallel, maybe R1, R2, R3, so on till Rn, let us say. Yeah. We have n resistors. Mm. Now, I am just going to, we can easily show this, but I am just going to show it based on this equation. Yeah. You will just get V by I and calculate this. You will just. <coughs> or we can write 1 by R equivalent is equal to. Yes, we will, maybe we will write it like that. 1 by R equivalent will just be 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 and so on till 1 by R. Rn. Or uh, some people prefer to write it as sigma. Maybe it is. Yeah. A mathematician would write it like this. <laughs> yes. Sigma i equals 1 to n yes. 1 by R i. Yes. So, that is. So, the inverse of the equivalent resistance is the sum of the inverses of each resistance. So, this gives us a nice very useful technique to simplify the network. So, okay. earlier we had n resistors, now you only have one resistor. Okay, okay. So, it is very, very simple. Can we use this to solve our previous question? Yes, yes, of course. So, we will go back to that question. Yeah. So, I will try to remember what we drew. So, I think we had three resistors like this. Yes. 
and uh, we use 3 volts, three volts. 1.5 kilo ohms 3 kilo ohms and 3 kilo, three kilo ohms yes i think this can mm. easily be simplified in fact because you have these two resistors in, in parallel in parallel so this will be together giving half, half of, of it that. okay okay so in fact we could have simplified this to so between those two points we could have just made it a single 1.5 kilo ohm resistor okay and here since they are in same current is flowing correct equivalent resistance will be in oh so now you are asking for the other equivalent resistance <laughs> because uh, we had this situation where we had two voltage sources in series. Yes. I will remember that one. So, when you had V and V, this, this was we the We found same, it is 2V. 2V, right? This was the same as a battery with voltage 2V because we said potential difference from here to um, from here to here is V and from here to here is V. Yeah. So, you have a total potential difference of 2V. Correct. So, now you are asking me what happens when you have two resistors in, in series. series. So, well, because the same current flows through them, hmm. they, all we have to do is apply Ohm's law and this is a little bit easier because this current is the same yeah. in the two cases. So, each one has the potential we difference use, of IR hmm. yeah. and this also has a potential difference of IR. So, now the total potential difference is 2 IR. Okay. And if you had a single resistance uh, hmm. which had this potential difference, so this is similar to R equivalent. Okay. So, this is nothing but 2R. 2R. Because so this current is flowing but creating twice the potential difference. So, the resistance has to be twice what it was before. If it is R1 and R2? If it was R1 and R2, so then it would just be R1 plus R2. Okay. So, I will also draw that here. It will be I R1 plus I R2. It will be I R1 plus I R2. So, if you had two different resistors R1 and R2 in series, the same current flows through them. So, if this were supposed to be equivalent to some equivalent resistance, the voltage drop across this is I R 1, the voltage drop across this is I R 2 and the voltage drop across this has to be I into R, R 1 plus R 2. R2. That is also equal to I times R equivalent. So, here is nothing but R1 plus R2. And now we can extend this. Now you we have can. n resistors in yeah, series. Yeah. So now you can imagine I have I go all the way to n resistors in series. So R1, R2, and so on till Rn. And uh, between the two ends, this is the same as one single R equivalent. This is nothing but the sum of all the resistors. Yes. So, I will also write it like this. Sigma yes. Ri from i equal to 1 to n. So, now we can use this in the circuit. Now, you can use this in the circuit. So, now this actually helps you a lot yeah. in simplifying simple many, circuit. many, yeah. many circuits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we actually started off from a very simple circuit. Correct. And only when things got complicated, we started having to use uh, nodal analysis, mesh analysis and so on. And now this makes it a lot easier. Can we go and complete that uh, solution? We will do that. This one? Yes. So, now we said that this is 1.5 and 1.5. So, so now we can also make it simpler. This actually makes it like look like an original <laughs> circuit. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, we have 3 volts. And 1.5 plus 1.5 is 3 kilo ohms. This so we know how to solve. So, 1 milliampere. This is 1 milliampere. So, is the same as the solution we got? Let us go check. <laughs> let us go check. So, let us go back. Yeah, 1 milliampere. 1 milliampere. So, we have it here. So, this current is 1 milliampere. Yes. The current flowing through from the voltage source. So, if you want to go back, you will have to. Uh, you now found out the current through the voltage source, yeah. but now if you need to find out the current through the individual resistors, 
you now need to go backwards mm. yeah and then find out the currents at each point because here they are equal values current will split current will split equally, split equally. correct so just like we said that when you put two resistors in parallel Parallel. we said that the current i is i1 plus i2 and we said i1 is equal to i2 yeah so if that is an interesting law that comes out of this which is that if you have a current entering into two equivalent resistors if you have a current i that enters you will get half the current in each of these mm-hmm. we wrote it the reverse we said i uh, i and 2i or i i by 2 i by 2 it doesn't matter which way you choose but half the current mm-hmm. will flow in each branch if they, those resistors are different ah if those resistors are different <laughs> then you can calculate as well in that case also mm-hmm. so if you have a resistors r1 and r2 and you have a current i now the voltage across the resistors is the same so uh, the easy way to okay imagine this so we know that i1 r1 is i2 r2 Correct. so that is one equation and we also know that i should be equal to i1 plus i2 i2 we can use these two to find out what the current will be and uh, shall we do it now or shall we leave it as a homework for the students maybe the students can think about it maybe the work. students can think about it we want to know yes. what i1 is and what i2 is we'll let them yes if i and r1 r2 are correct. not correct so if we know r1 if we know r2 and we know i we want to find out what i1 is so we want to find out i1 is in terms of i r1 r2 and same thing here also yeah we will let them figure it out yes they also need some homework <laughs> yes <laughs>